So I, the way I try to think through my own life and the way that I encourage other people to think through theirs is what is my goal and what are the actions that I can take that are going to get me to my goal? Um, so when I think of what you've been doing over the last, call it two years, you've really made yourself the go-to liberal that people on either side of the spectrum are going to want to engage with. And you really have made, uh, you've, you've been incredibly respectful. You've been very thoughtful. You, um, are extremely good in debating. And so suddenly it felt like we had two sides that could really come together. And the response to the debate that you did with Ben Shapiro on Lex, I think is proof of that huge number of views. And we got to see really different uh, vantage points politically coming together to have a fruitful conversation. Then after um, Corey uh, was killed and your reaction came out, that was very inflammatory. I would say it seemed intentionally inflammatory. Uh, I was like, are you now rebranding like what you're trying to put forward like i'm done pretending to be civil and nice and this is where i really wanted to be the whole time or are you gonna renormalize like walk me through the the dramatic change in presentation so the way that my my youtube editor gave me kind of this idea in that i kind of like i can have long legs and short arms or i can have long arms and short legs that at my most aggressive, I have very short legs, but very long arms, meaning that if I get you in my grasp, I'm going to be incredibly compelling uh, because I'm going to be making very strong arguments in the most aggressive manner possible with the most overwhelming like style of argumentation. Um, but my my legs are very short at that point. I can't get out of my community very much because people just see me as being incredibly aggressive. And they're like, okay, I want to talk to this guy. Like this guy's like way too, you know, he's, he's way too mean and debatey or whatever. Um, I think before I had very long legs, but very short arms. And that I hate that comment that you just made. It actually has been eating away at my brain for months. And I've complained about this on stream. This has been building for probably, um, probably for the entire year. If you go and you look at the debates that I've done with Candace Owens, with Jordan Peterson, with Ben Shapiro, the comments under all these videos are the exact same. Wow, what a nice debate. It's so nice that these people have spoken to each other. Wow, cool that we can come together and talk. Wow, what a nice debate. I hate that. Because nobody's actually considering any of the things being said. They're just happy that two people can sit in a room and talk to each other. However, for me to do this requires me to, to blunt my perception of the world so much and to blunt my desired engagement with some of the things that people are saying. It is physically excruciating for me. Uh, it is psychologically uh, like destroying me that... Um, like an example that I give for Ben Shapiro is like, I had this whole like train of uh, like, I'll, I'll plot out rhetorically and factually, like how I want to think about a debate before I go into it. And all these notes are public. I, I talk about this on stream and for Ben Shapiro, I had this whole line of, I want to prove to you that you guys treat Donald Trump differently than you guys treat Joe Biden. Like you guys, you grade him on a curve. And I asked him that question in the Lex Freeman debate. I was like, do you think that you guys grade Donald Trump on a curve? And he was like, yeah, of course. And I was like, Oh, and it just like short circuit my brain. And do you think that if, gener- if Trump wins, mm-hmm. there will be no more elections? Is that is that like what? What I put don't a percentage know if, on it. What, what percentage do you think that that's a reality? If, that if Donald if Trump, Donald Trump wins, I think there is a one hundred percent chance that he will try to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. In terms of would can, he succeed? I can guarantee you he will not do that. Why is that? Because he's in a second term and he's no longer eligible and he will believe he won and he will leave. Yeah, but hasn't Donald Trump himself <laughs> joked about running for a third term? That's, that's I think that, that I think that uh, having a third term. That, what what has Donald Trump not joked about? I mean. I don't want, okay, <laughs> hold on. Well, if, you want, if, if, you want to prevent, if you want to prevent him from creating a revolution, you probably should sure. actually just appoint him president and here's then he can't a, run again. So. Here's another broad argument that I don't like in favor of Trump. And this was brought up <laughs> earlier in terms of like, we talk about like not grading presidents on a curve, but then earlier we said we take Biden's rhetoric. Oh no, I totally grade Trump. I, no, I 100% grade presidents on a curve. Are you kidding? Oh, okay. I grade pretty much everybody on a well, curve. Then I feel like- I don't treat my seven-year-old I the same like, way that I treat my nine-year-old. Sure, but I don't I don't like that it feels like we're treating Donald Trump like a seven-year-old or a nine-year-old. I think we should treat him like the president of the United States. I don't think having a president that has taken like concrete steps to prevent the transfer of power, which he did with the electorate's sham, which he did with Pence, and which he did with trying to capitalize on the J6 violence. A president has taken concrete steps towards uh, uh, cooing the government, essentially. I don't know why that guy, we'd say, well, you know, it's Trump, he does Trump things. The guardrails held, I'll probably hold next so, time. So, like, I mean, w- when we say we shouldn't, do you mean that he should be actually barred from office? I'm just talking about support for him. I don't even think Republicans should support, should support Trump. You lose your incumbent advantage. The guy's obviously self-destructive. He's destructed the political party itself. 
I could have had a two hour conversation on just that topic alone. And I don't like that I've had these conversations with people and all I feel like I'm doing is I'm shortening the Overton window where you have all of these insane people, the Hassans, the Vosh's, the people far on the left that in my opinion are, are just insane. And then you've got these insane far right people um, that I would say right now is the majority of the conservative movement that all follow Donald Trump. And what happens is, is when I show up to debate, I'm not as crazy as these guys, so I'm here. What happens is, is when I show up to debate, I've I've shortened the Overton window, and now the viewers are like, oh, okay, well, this guy seems cool and reasonable. He's representing something. So like, maybe I'll move from like here to like here, but now I have much stronger conviction because I see that like this guy's represented the left, and I've heard their arguments, and now I'm like over here, and it's like, no. <laughs> to be clear, like my position might be here, but in my mind, the reasonable discourse is like from here to like here. Like these guys that I'm talking to over here that I'm being nice to and I'm being cordial to are are absolutely insane. Like we are in a crash course for this country to like into oblivion. <laughs> and I have to talk to these guys like they're normal, intelligent, thinking human beings. Like I just sit across from Jordan Peterson saying, oh, 20 percent excess deaths in Europe are all caused by the vaccine. And I'm like, huh, OK, yeah. Wow. That's a that's a take. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. I could. There's a million examples, but. It's not good. It's not okay. It's not cool. <laughs> okay. So I, I want to understand yeah. that very last part. It's not okay. It's not good. It's not cool. Um, it implies that there is a destination that you're trying to get to. What is that destination? I think before, like, before, like, uh, what, six days ago, I think my destination was always like trying to present a more understandable argument on my side and kind of like move people a little bit closer, meet them where they were and move them a little bit closer. But I think, especially as I've begun to read more, uh, I feel like the time is running shorter on that. So now my focus has very violently and very abruptly shifted to, okay, well, if you're a liberal, here are the reasons why you should care about these particular things. And here are the like three arguments that you need to be beating every single conservative over the head with from now until the election. And you don't talk about anything else until you've run through these three things. Nothing else is allowed to be spoken about until you've, until you've gotten this. It's insane that they're allowed to skirt by on these things and nobody makes them like account for them. That's, so that's that's where I'm at right now, basically. Yeah. Okay. So the three things that you want to go over and over, um, I don't remember all three, but I know that January sixth is one that the it was Donald an insurrection. Yeah. It's like not their reasonable minds cannot disagree on this point. Okay. So the goal behind getting every conservative to confront those things, namely the insurrection, uh, just cannot be looked past, uh, is to get them to vote for Biden to get them to break out of cult-like thinking? What What is the end game to that confrontation? There's four levers, I think, when it comes to mobilizing voters in a two-person race. You can either- uh, And is that the goal? Mobilize voters in a two-person race? Kind of. Well, there, there's four things. There's, there's four ways to do it. You can either increase or decrease the turnout on your side, or you can increase or decrease the turnout on the other side. Um, so I guess my goal is to decrease the turnout on the other side by demotivating, like, hey, the guy that you're voting for is an insurrectionist, okay? Like, here are the reasons why you should not like this candidate. Even if you're conservative, you shouldn't like this candidate. Um, and then on my side, it's to increase, it's to motivate. So, hey, this is a really important election. Regardless of what you think about Biden, reasonable minds cannot disagree on what this election should look like. There's just, there's no place for a reasonable disagreement here.